Let's talk five ways to automate your business. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, you've reached the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 164. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Channel Brian, what's going on? Well, I'm working on uh, automating my business, and I thought I might share some of those tips with our dear, dear listeners today. Yeah, I don't know that people really get the uh, true value in the fact that Jan O'Brien, who has been a incredibly knowledgeable real estate coach for many, many, many moons and has coached to many, 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 many people and teams in the United States of America and beyond, um, that now... You get to do, uh, to hear things that are happening real life, real time, real frustrations right now because Jan O'Brien is building a team in a new state. So it is actually pretty cool. And we're, learning things, we're learning things along the way, right? Yes, and I, and I like the fact that I do feel your pain when I go through the things I'm going to talk about today. Then That's right. I do understand these are some things we have done. There's things I'm still working on, and I feel your pain because there's just not enough time in the day, frankly, to get everything done. And that is the point of today's podcast. How do you go ahead, stop, do some things so that you can put your business a little bit on autopilot? You can't do all of it on autopilot, but if you do take heed to some of the points we want to cover today, perhaps you can free yourself up to have a little bit more time to, oh, I don't know, get up and get out, take a little break, be able to run your business from anywhere. Yeah, those are the benefits. Those are good benefits. Thank you very much. Shall we jump in? Let's do it. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, tune in, and you can watch us on YouTube. All right, so we have five ways to automate your business. Uh, these are also my five ways for, to, save, to save time, time-saving tips. And you know, I have such love for this first one. And I actually, it says leverage your CRM if you're listening on the podcast. You know, all, as always, there's show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. And you can go to our YouTube channel where you can see us, you know, live recorded, recorded live and these notes. When I wrote number one, leverage your CRM, it first said, use your damn CRM. And that is how I really feel. Because when you really get just this one thing, you all have a CRM. I'm pretty confident of it because I bet your company, your local MLS, your association of realtors provides one to you that you could use even if you didn't want to pay for one. So we all have one. We just don't all decide to go use it because it's like, oh, it's another time suck. That's what happens to most of us, right? But a great real estate client relationship management software backend system, maybe the back end of your website potentially is going to, and this is why I recommend highly that you get a real estate CRM that already has the very first thing, which is campaigns that are built in to follow up with your buyer and seller leads. For example, this is one of the most important things is if you're nurturing people in your pipeline that want to ultimately work with you, you want, you hope that they'll ultimately work with you. You need to leverage the power of a CRM that has the latest and greatest technology. So you can send a text, you can send a nice newsletter on a monthly basis. Uh, you can prompt them with the emails and, and honestly, autoresponders are fine for that initial connection, but you need to keep it personal. And that's why if you leverage the CRM to do the automation part, it gives you time to do the customization and the personal touches like sending a video text or checking in and doing a text conversation with someone because you know you feel good that something is going out to your people, right? The other thing I love about leveraging your CRM is if you use it wisely and use it daily, you're always scheduling the next follow-up call or connection with anybody in your database and you're not relying on you know your brain 
to remind you, oh, I got to call Matt because it's his birthday, which actually it is in like 10 days. <laughs> Coming up. Uh, so anyway, leverage your damn CRM. So you know, how can you change it to leverage your CRM from uh, use your damn CRM? I don't know. I just just did. I'm not afraid to say that. You're not? No. Okay. Well, my next one, Matt, you can help me with is use a social media media schedule, a scheduler like Canva, Buffer, or Hootsuite. Now, here's the thing I want to say about this. You want to leverage the, the uh, and Canva has a great one, right? I mean, Canva has, a spe but you only can do one at a time. Is that the downfall of the Yeah, Canva but most one? of those are like that anymore anyway. Buffer's like that too. Okay, but you could go do the work. This It's not going to take the place of you. Once again, number one, you do the personal touches. You make the phone calls. Your CRM can't do that part for you. It can't customize. You don't want everything to look like it's a, you know, an automated deal. Right. Same thing with your social media. However, you can schedule stuff out and spend, for example, uh, a couple hours once a week and build out all the posts that you want to do that you know you need to get done or articles or leverage the things that you're using. Like I love keeping current matters. Um, I could go back and, and get the last uh, five days of blog posts and schedule them in Canva uh, because I have them up on my blog post and I'm going to go share them on social, for example. But I could automate that process and save time using a tool like Canva, Buffer, or, or Hootsuite. I think doing it ahead of time is a brilliant idea. Even if you don't, need, you don't even have to think a month out. Just think a week out. If you take yeah. like a on your your Sunday or a Monday morning or something, and you know what's happening the next week, including open houses and things like that, you could schedule all of that and then not have to worry about sending that out. Because here's the thing: when you get busy, the first thing that's going to get missed is all of those reminders. So yes. those kind of things are important. And then it lets you to you do your thing, whether it's in the moment or you schedule it. So right. because perhaps you do a weekly a Facebook live show, for example, or you're out doing a video to go on your YouTube channel, or you're doing something on the fly for an Instagram, a story or real, because you're very good at uh, capturing, you know, the behind the scenes, this is what I'm doing today. And that's part of your strategies for your business. Then you can do those things in the moment, knowing that there's other content that's going out. All right. So that's, that is uh, number two, tip number two. And number three is for my Gmail users out there. I am a total fan of templates. So I still think you need to use your CRM for the majority of campaigns and so forth. But I do find sometimes when you're doing these one-off emails to a client in the middle of a transaction, sometimes the problem with CRMs, MailChimp, any kind of email marketing is sometimes they go to spam. And, you know, they, they all think they do a great job with it, but I'm telling you, we've used it, Matt, we've used all of them. Sure. But still, if people don't whitelist you, it can go to spam because it's an email marketing system. But when you send an email to your client that you're in the middle of a transaction with from your Gmail, uh, then they're going to get it. Okay. Cause you've been communicating with them. So the key with templates is you just need to turn them on. So in the show notes over at WBNL podcast for episode, what are we? 160 something? 164. I never remember what number we're on. <laughs> we're just, you know, carrying on. I've got a couple screen captures for you. It's real simple. You just go into your Gmail settings, a little icon wheel, and then you go to advanced settings, scroll down just a little bit. You'll see templates and they will be disabled until you hit enable. And here's a little trick always with anything to do with your Gmail. You got to scroll to the bottom, bottom, bottom and hit save changes. It's like way down the bottom. You hit save changes and voila, you will have templates. Um, you know, and I think we have a little video that we could even now that video I created, we could pop that in the show notes, couldn't we? The uh, Gmail, I did a whole like uh, example of what I'm talking about. Plus also uh, gave you two examples. Like one was a client request for a client review, how to go create the template and how to send it. It's super easy. So why don't we just do that as a little bonus? Uh, we'll add that to the show notes today. Making a note of it. Hey, while we're talking about Gmail, you know, another great feature in, in uh, Gmail that I use all the time is to schedule emails to go out. So you oh, can talk about you can, that. You can right. pre-write your emails too and schedule them. I do it. I do it at least two or three times a week with clients that we have. So it's very handy to get that stuff off your plate. That way, you don't have to worry about you know forgetting to do it. 
I forgot about the scheduling little hack uh -huh. in Gmail. And that's a great point. So what kind of things could you send out in these in these Gmail templates before I move into this next one? It, it could be things like, I just said client review. It could be when you're mid in the, during the transaction. It could be, uh, congratulations, we're under contract and here's the next steps. It's the, think of the evergreen emails that you always need to send out again and again and maybe slightly customize. So you put the template, there's a little holder for it in the, because you've enabled templates and you can insert the template and then boom, you can just save tons of time for repetitive tasks, things that you do all the time before, during and after with a client. That's what that you know, that talks to what we always uh, that we're big on is the five star, you know, client experience. Yes. And, you know, communication is clearly at the very top of that list. And, you know, it might be easy for you to get in and say, yeah, I'm going to start doing that. With my clients, you do it with the first the first client, but you never do it again. But if you use these templates, they, like Jen just said, those re repetitive tasks are already there. You don't have to worry about rebuilding it. So it's just this is like a, a no brainer thing to do that might take a little time to get set up, but you are going to love it and it's going to reap. You're going to reap the rewards on that forever. I use it all the time for yeah, yeah. parts of the business um, for doing common tasks. All right. Number four is build an operations manual. Now, this is just the epitome of running your business as a business. And I don't want you to go, holy crap, an operations manual. Who has time for that? So why don't we just start with simple checklists? Okay. So Brilliant. you start with a checklist in the key areas of your business. And ultimately it can become a full blown operations manual, uh, which will make sense when I go through number five here, why you want one. So seller and buyer BDA before, during and after. So you start with that. Everything you do A to Z with a seller, everything you do A to Z with a buyer, you put it in a little checklist. We recommend obviously Google Drive. Uh, you also want to cover everything that you do with your database, your follow-up for that, your client appreciation program. Just make that checklist. It's a system. So you cannot rely on the, you know, your brain with the how much stuff we've got going on in our lives to remind you, oh, it's time to send out such and such. You need checklists. You need to leverage technology to help you with all of this. So that is super important. And just start with checklists. And then ultimately it can become uh your social media marketing plan obviously could be another one, but any of the major areas that you're that you're doing things uh, for your business, start with a checklist and then it can turn into your eventually your operations manual, which brings me to the last one, which is hire a virtual assistant. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, we I'm saying hire a virtual assistant first, you know, before you even consider maybe getting an, a, a real assistant, a real assistant that that's maybe working with you to help you that's licensed can do so much more for you. But let's, oh, yeah. let's take a baby step and a cost effective step. And honestly, our partner Cosmo Marabi is the one who convinced us to take this leap of faith and get, we now have, we now have an elaborate team of virtual assistants working we with do. us to take the tasks off our plate of editing videos and uh, helping with marketing tasks and copywriting and, and social media tasks. So some of the things that I talked about today, a virtual assistant can help you with that. A virtual assistant can help you create your operations manual. You know, if you if they're if they're doing certain things for you, when you hire a VA or an assistant, one of the tasks I've done in our company in the past was I had our assistant write our operations manual because we taught her what we needed her to do. And as she was doing it, I said, I want you to grab screenshots and I want you to write down the step by step how you onboard an agent. Then and I honestly, to, who better to do that, right? Than the person that's actually that's right. doing it. So every task you, you can have your virtual assistant just, you know, record, even record videos, you know, annotate everything they're doing in a simple little drive document. So why do you do this? Because people come and go that you bring onto your team, for example, you have, there's so many reasons to have this operations manual. It's first and foremost to, to put, to save you time to organize your life and to not be so chaotic. But then it becomes a way for you to delegate tasks that you have. So when you hire an assistant, if you go back to the, the one I talked about with a checklist, um, number four, build your operations manual. And you just start with the checklist. Once you hire an assistant or a VA, you can go down that list and probably find 25% of the things that you could task <laughs> someone else. Bless you. Thank you. Sneezed on the truth. And the you can free up 25% of your time on all these tasks you're doing that a, an assistant can help you with. So then it becomes a checklist. It becomes how you have an assistant help you. And then later it becomes your operations manual that if you 
down the road piece, want to create an exit strategy, train your replacement, you have an operations manual. All businesses have one. You have standard operating procedures. In the military, we called it an SOP, standard operating procedures. Your processes, the way you do things is out of your head into a trusted system that somebody can follow. Brilliant, right? And a virtual assistant can help you with that. Now, where do you go find VAs? Well, you can start with places like Fiverr. There's all types of uh, freelance people that are out there. Just Google freelance support. And, and, and virtual assistants, the perfect kind of task to give virtual assistants are things around marketing. Uh, if you're going to get into video, hiring somebody to edit your videos, oh my goodness, it's not the highest use of your time to become a video editor and go down that ra rabbit hole and upload them to YouTube. Is that true or false, Matt Emerson? That is so true. <laughs> you know, helping you with even design of some of your marketing materials and your social media posts. These are things that you could have someone else do. And then you could venture into other things that you're doing around. Well, anything administrative things. and they can help you with your uh, CRM. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> everything we talked about today, they could, yeah, exactly. they could be automating and inputting everything. They could get you using your CRM. So those are the five strategies to, to, to save time and to help automate your business, put a little, put it on autopilot, recommend that you look at all of them. And uh, honestly, if we looked at five first, that could help you with making sure all those things happen. But if you're not ready to to, to spend some money and you don't have to spend tons of money on a virtual assistant. You can probably have for less than uh, 500 bucks a month. You could sure, have somebody sure. helping you get a lot of tasks done somewhere between $500,000 a month for sure. So, so what right. was the number one tip in there, Jana Brian? Hmm? The number one tip today, what, what's what, what, what stands out amongst them all? Well, for individually, it's use your CRM. Use your no, it's damn use your CRM. damn CRM. Oh, you set me up. Use your damn CRM, people. Use your damn CRM. There you go. And it's the truth. I just swear to goodness, if you just everybody forget everything else I said and just go learn that, your life will be so much better. I just know it will. Agreed. But you got to get past the whole, oh, is it a learning curve? I don't have time for it. Yes, you do. The whole problem is you are burning valuable time on this planet because you refuse to go learn how to use your damn CRM. Once you do, you're going to thank me and I want to get those thank you letters and those accolades and those video testimonials from you when you start using your damn CRM. There you That's go. all I all have right. today, Matt. I feel good, like this stuff is always I have, I've been preaching. No more <laughs> preaching. All right. Well, I guess that is a, 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 a wrap for episode one. I'm like, Sheldon, the, the our mascot is all over the place today. So, uh, Sheldon, where are we going this weekend? Anywhere? Pardon me? Sheldon, are we going on a trip this weekend? I don't know. Uh, no. <laughs> he he's he wants us to stay home and do nothing. That's he's going to be really sad when the uh, when the pandemic fully loosens up and there's not someone you know uh, catering after Jeopardy. He's not going to know what to do. Oh, boy. Hey, John, Brian, I have a question. I was thinking about this yesterday. What is your thought on um, kind of what's going down with Facebook right now? Not so much necessarily politically with, you know, who being <laughs> suspended still, but just in general. I don't know. I, I, I was just listening to some things around that on on how big they are. I really do think big tech, big social media is out of control, to be honest. And, you know, I, I think there needs to be something done because done on some level. Um, it is all about money and greed and that company's publicly traded and as the others are and their goal is to get the shareholders the most money and that means they're going to maybe not follow their own guidelines and they're going to do things and it's just a little bit concerning because I, I feel that I, I'm disappointed in I don't even spend that much time on Facebook anymore or a lot of them because I just get I don't like the polarization I don't like how I feel like the computers, the algorithms that they're using are really, we don't even know in the big picture for our younger people, how it's impacting um, our lives that, you know, the, the information that's served up. I, I listened to somebody today to say the algorithm is based on providing uh, content that you're going to interact with. And what's been proven out in the last several years, it's, it's, it's uh, really, content that gets you enraged and gets you fired up is what sells. And yeah, so it's so the far. hype of all this crazy stuff that gets up there that people don't know if it's true or false. It's just a nightmare really, you know, and I feel like we, we've gotten away from just good old fashioned communicating and, 
everybody's got an opinion and it's just radical. So I don't know. Well, it's interesting because, you know, that platform was never designed to turn into what it was, you know, I mean, it it morphed and they, they stayed on top of it and they, they, they ran with it, but it really wasn't, you know what I mean? You remember the, the, the movie social network where there the Zuckerberg and buddies are are doing it, you know, in college, figuring this stuff out and it's called faces and it's just almost a bit of a dating thing. And and look what it's become. It's ridiculous. It's not a, you know, what's interesting. I didn't know this together. It's bringing people apart right now. And I heard this uh, stat, I think it was uh, yesterday at some point that kind of fascinated me that only 32% of the users of Facebook are from the United States, that it's a far larger platform worldwide than it is in the U S. So I thought that was fascinating. Hmm. Well, I don't know, you know, so I look at that as what we do on Facebook at this point for me is used to be since I was not closer to my family, I used it to, uh, see what's up with my family. Now I have to tell you, I don't even hardly do that. I don't know when's the last time I really posted much on Facebook. I think it's an advertising platform. That's what it's turned into, which yeah. is sad. It's not a social well, network. It's, it's how you use it, right? Yeah. And I, I would guarantee you that most of the people that are on Facebook are using it for that very reason. Yeah. Or the people that like to rant and rave and, ha- and get all that craziness going. I, yeah, see, I, I blocked life. myself from all of that noise a long time That's ago. Right. I don't see any of that. I haven't seen a political ad on my Facebook wall in five years, probably, because I just don't see them. I it's don't, that's too, not because that, that, you don't engage there. good. And there's too much noise there and it's too crazy. And I yeah. prefer to go do other things now. Like my I just, Facebook page is all about national parks. Yeah. <laughs> Disney like parks, go, uh, I'm going to go ride my, my bike. I got myself a nice secondhand uh, Trek bike. I love that. And you know, that's where I'm going to go spend my time so that we can get up and get out and do things more often. I'm hoping to do some of that this weekend. It's that time to get nice. up and get out and do something and maybe take the bike on a, one of the trails that's around here. There's a couple of state trails. The Pinellas trail is one of them. And I think I'm going to do that. My friend, I'm going to jump in the vehicle and uh, go explore via my new, my new bicycle. I love that. My uh, sweet pea and I went out and actually had dinner or uh, lunch in a restaurant last weekend, which was really fun. We haven't been doing that much. We're feeling more comfortable now. We're going to go out tonight for date night, not tonight, tomorrow night for date night, Friday night. And then my, uh, so we have our her sisters are coming down. We're going to see one of her sisters for the first time in 14 months. So it's wow. going to be a Good very stuff. nice weekend. Yeah. All right. Looking forward to it. So there anyway. it is. Yeah. All right, everyone. I guess that's going to be it for today. As always, get up, get out. Um, if you haven't been vaccinated yet, you know what? Go get vaccinated because here's the deal. Whether you feel safe and healthy yourself, that's all fine and good. But do it for the other people that maybe might have immune systems not quite as strong as yours. And be forever wandering, but not lost. Thank you.